Hello and welcome. I'm Jerry Smith. I'm Bonnie McDonald Dixon. And so we're welcoming you to another session of the Health Pioneer Theater. And in the Health Pioneer Theater, for those of you who are new, we preview and discuss health pioneers in the natural products industry and the natural products medicine and in general, natural approaches for living. Now, we have a good library that we're building of interviews we've had with different people in, who were pioneers. Maybe they started 50 years ago. Uh, many of the pioneers in the natural products arena and lifestyles uh, started a long time ago, so they're getting up in years. So we're trying, uh, our mission is to record their stories to inspire new generations to continue their work. So today we're going to talk about the Bragg legacy. Now, the Bragg legacy for some of you may mean apple cider vinegar, but is a lot more to it. And looking at it a little bit, you will come to realize how much work went into changing the minds of people in the early, early and mid 20th century to go back instead of going forward to go natural instead of industrializing their food. So let's share a little bit because the Bragg legacy is uh, still in business and they have uh, new generations uh, promoting these um, products and lifestyles. So let's see a little bit then about that. So we're going to go to the website of the Bragg Company. And here we are. So as you see, this is the Bragg established 1912. And one of their preeminent products uh, be rediscovered is apple cider vinegar. But there was a lot more involved in the um, legacy of the um, Paul Bragg and his um, daughter, uh, Patricia Bragg. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, you can see there's a timeline here. And basically, their slogan is 100 years in the making. And, you know, Paul, Bla uh, Paul Bragg, he was in an era of being very uh, industrious and uh, very opinionated. But mostly this was a reaction to what was available to city folk uh, as far as to things to eat. And there wasn't uh, farm fresh produce. It was hard even to get old milk into the cities. So what uh, resulted is a lot of physically weakened and unhealthy people. So his mission, and he was evangelistic in his mission, so much so that his tours of the country were called crusades, which is a controversial word today. But the idea was to convert the uh, people addicted to um, too many stimulants and very uh, hardly any vegetables and, you know, basically starches and proteins burnt to healthy foods and healthy uh, um, uh, lifestyles. So here we see um, he ha physically he had a, a good physique and he uh, shared it quite a bit. In fact, one of the stories is uh, in the 50s, a man started following uh, Bragg's recommendation, particularly on physical physical culture, they uh, call it sometimes, and that was Jack LaLanne. So most people still remember Jack LaLanne, at least if you're over 40. And he was a TV pioneer, bringing a lot of this, particularly physical activity. But more than that, he had juicers and all kinds of good advice to people uh, uh, who uh, were flabby and saggy watching him on television. So uh, here's some of the early uh, foods that he uh, produced. And let's see, there's another page here. One of the things, Jerry, is not only did they had over 250 products that they had come out with yeah, at one good. point. Uh, they're very famously known throughout North America, U.S. and Canada for the Bragg's cider vinegar as well as Bragg's liquid aminos. But they had at one time two, oh, 
250 products. There's also spices. They have some really great spices to go along with that. They wrote, there were over 10 books, Jerry. Cool. Uh, they wrote one on apple cider vinegar specifically, healthy lifestyle, fasting, breathing. Uh, these were really what we'd call in the old days health nuts in such a wonderful way. Yes. Now, since that product is uh, so popular, what would you say, because uh, you used to sell it, Bonnie, and, and so did I. I did. What, why should you pay twice as much for this kind of vinegar than something else? What was the idea? Well, number one, it was organic. And, you know, organics have come into their own now. But we're talking years ago, they had organic cider vinegar. And then on top of that, they utilized it in recipes that we would know that would be very helpful to go on top of salads. But one of the things that I, I know for from empirical data is I have a friend and he's over 100 years old. And one of the techniques is they take a about one ounce a day of pure cider vinegar and drink it. And uh, people absolutely swear that that helps them. And I do believe uh, it was very helpful for digestion and digestion, you know, is key to health. And so that is one very famous thing that was known about drinking the organic apple cider vinegar. It's uh, actually very tasty. Also, I would add to that, that they emphasize two things on the front label for those who we don't know already, that it's unpasteurized. And as a result of them not pasteurizing it, which was taboo among a lot of products in, in, sold in the 60s, 50s, and 40s, fear of infection, you know, it has the mother. And the yeah. mother is related pretty much to the bact naturally occurring bacteria, if you leave apple cider vinegar alone, that would occur. And that was kind of scary to some people, but we know uh, enough about probiotics and the benefits of um, of healthful bacteria to know that's part of the secret to this product. In any case, it has, uh, I see it everywhere in every supermarket I go in, and it's really uh, it has a, a renewed enthusiasm for it. Well, we have a, a, a short video that the Bragg people did make about uh, Paul Bragg and his daughter. And, um, and kind of the transitions of the company is 100 years. I mean, that's a long time. So let's take a peek at that. And let's see here. Okay. And there we go. All right. The most important thing you have That's in right. life is your body. Paul Bragg started Bragg back in okay. 1912. Well, start it's again. A line of yeah, it's not responding. Okay. Well, we are having technical difficulties because it's not letting. Okay, there we go. My user error. User error. Got it. Okay. All right. This is a nice history of the Bragg products. The most important thing you have in life is your body. Paul Bragg started Bragg back in 1912. It's a line of products that encourages people to enjoy the process of getting healthy. He began with a few products and he, in the end, expanded it to 365 products. Paul's mission was to make everybody aware that your health is your wealth. 
that what you put into your body fueled it. Paul was a dynamo speaker, and every time he gave a lecture, people would flock to do whatever he told them. He had Hollywood stars, he had all kinds of followers, and Patricia was part of all that learning. And Patricia's responsibility when they were together was to always make everything work. And I think when Paul passed away, she really didn't know how to take on the lead role. It was always about Paul. I think what sparked her confidence was a gradual understanding that people were not just interested in Paul, that they were really following her now. As she started to get more and more recognition, she started to do a lot of radio shows herself and people coming up to her at the expo and expressing how much they love Bragg and wanting pictures with her. I think people are just drawn to follow her because she's so positive about what she wants. They just, they know that she knows what she's doing and they just follow. She is just four foot eleven or four ten, but her attitude and her presence is about six six. She is um, potentially one of the most authentic and remarkable people I've ever met. She is um, a firecracker. She mixes and matches. It doesn't matter if it's stripes, flowered, print, as long as it's wild, vibrant colors. You're with Patricia Bragg, I head of Bragg Life Food Products, and also the lady that gave me my first guitar at 13. Patricia started out being good friends with Katy Perry's mom and dad. I was introduced to Patricia after having read her book, The Miracle of Fasting. I wrote Patricia a letter, and um, she wrote me back. It was amazing. And she gave me her phone number. And we talked for about an hour and we became fast friends. We were in the church and then Katie would sing. Patricia saw this all and I'd tell her about it all the time. And then she heard it too. And so one day she said, I'm going to buy you a guitar. And Katie still has that guitar. You know, it was so selfless what you did because you kind of like, she put up the money for the guitar, but she said, oh, the church paid for it or whatever. It was a collective, but you know you did it it was awesome and it was really it was the point i think for me where i was like oh someone believes in me why did you buy me that first guitar because i feel felt that it would be wonderful for you to be able to play the guitar and add music to the world i feel very thankful for all the miracles the blessings that i've had all these years and i'm sure paul was similar in that way too, right? He was just amazing. He gave me guidance in life and he gave it to the world. Let's celebrate. Are you excited? Yes. Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> to eat and drink, walk and talk tomorrow. You are a breathing machine. Oxygen, the miracle of life, oxygen, and you are what you think. Connect like you say, words of living. Are they good? Are they kind? Are they necessary? And next is what you do. This is mentally, spiritually, emotionally, what you do with your life. All right. Well, obviously, she was a very vivacious person, and um, what we can learn from that is in fact bonnie actually did a great interview with her before uh before the pandemic and that was a year and a half ago a little bit more yeah. than a year and a half ago so bonnie one tell the, us how one that went things, jerry is that uh well you and i had been to many of the expo west trade shows and we always knew when Patricia was walking down one of the aisles because she'd have an entourage for number one. But for number two, she was only 4'11", but she'd wear these very vibrant, as you saw in the video, outfits with usually a, a, a pink or a brightly colored uh, hat. And uh, she always had this huge smile on her face. So she was quite the persona, quite the, quite the character. And... Um, I did get to uh, actually go to her home. My husband and I went to her home in Santa Barbara and uh, a beautiful orchard. Mm -hmm. She has uh, an orchard there, an apple orchard, of course. And um, we sat and, and had chat with her. Uh, now she is over 90. She's probably more like 92 now. And uh, but I did sit on the same couch that Carrie pa uh, Katie Perry sat on, mm -hmm. and uh, we really had a lovely chat. 
uh, at her home. So um, what Patricia, I think's done, Jerry. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead. Let's play that video. Okay. You know, all these people you've met, some famous, some people just like me, not famous, but just living their lives and being inspired by the Bragg way. What do you think gave you and Paul the most joy of working with so many amazing, you know, so many people around the world, it's too many to count? We loved to inspire people to healthy living, mm -hmm. to a healthy life to a long and joyous life, mm -hmm. to share their joy and knowledge with the world, mm -hmm. to help this be a healthy world. Mm -hmm. wow. wow, that's what we wanted for it, the world. Mm -hmm. Health, peace, joy, happiness. Mm -hmm. You're still doing it today. You're still an inspiration for so many. And sometimes people in today's world with all the news and everything, what do you think um, that same message can be out there for them? What do you think the, the best thing for people to know about living a Bragg's healthy way? Will it help them cope with today's world? Yes, when they realize that they are the leaders of their life. That they can be healthy, happy, and live a long life. And they can lead their life to doing the best mm -hmm. in life, to be mm -hmm. healthy and happy. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. And not wait for someone else to live it no. for them. No! They'll be their own leader. They'll be their own leader and not to pay attention to so much that's out there, but just be within. That's right. Be your own health captain. Your own health captain. Yes. Health is your wealth. So, so that was really fun, Jerry, being at uh, next, sitting next to her. She truly is embodies everything that she's done over the many years. She has embodied that, exudes health and wealth, and uh, and she knows it from the tip of her toes, to the top of her head. Well, you know, she she obviously has some diminished capacity at this time in her life, and mm -hmm. but it's the fact that she got that far it speaks volumes, don't you think? And um, uh, part, part of this, you know, they, uh, the, the company's history is kind of, they preceded the, um, the general pervasiveness of supplements to food, food supplements, because their primary emphasis was, healthier foods even you know just even cereals were not were, were a big deal so i guess my point is they practice the fundamentals they did. and and it, it goes beyond just a faddish um you know um slavery to i take this pill and i will feel better or live longer and so forth it was a whole lifestyle wouldn't you wouldn't you say Yes, absolutely. And in fact, some of the books that uh, they wrote were full of recipes and, um, and really eating, quote, whole foods. They, they took real food and they made real recipes. And uh, today you can go online and, and go to their website, uh, thebrag.com, and get those recipes so that um, you can and actually really vibrantly eat, in other words, the, the foods pop in your mouth. If you buy organic, I do know that when I make a soup, a certain uh, Italian soup called Ribolita soup with regular vegetables, it's delicious. When I make it with organic vegetables, 
the flavor pops. And so mm -hmm. that's what they've done. They have olive oils still on the market today. The Bragg's liquid cider vinegar. They have the Bragg's liquid amino uh, is like a soy sauce, but it's made with soy versus wheat. And uh, it's very tasty on top of uh, rice, brown rice or something, or, or seasoning for any vegetable. Uh, that's a very fun seasoning to use as well. Now, I know Paul talked a lot about the vitality of food and avoiding foods that were not vit vitae right. in Latin means alive. And right. basically, those terms are somewhat antiquated. Although we still use the term vitamins, which is, I believe its derivation was vitam vitalized minerals. So it's, it was like oh. something biologically um, similar to minerals. But the, the point being is that this was way ahead uh, in the sense of avoiding processed foods. Now, you know, the American Medical Association would buy into that. They want you to eat five a day. Five what? Five non-processed foods. So these ideas were c considered controversial, um, heretical practically in the 30s and 40s. And um, many people just thought it was, it, it was um, an extreme. And, and, you know, to an extent, probably most people weren't, uh, aren't going to adopt a very strict lifestyle. Of course, unless they live in Beverly Hills, you know. Then the all bets are off. No, just kidding. But uh, <laughs> uh, the the point being is that we have inherited this legacy of appreciating um, through several generations, picking up that messaging and, and retranslating it mm -hmm. to eat raw foods. And then that was that was a, see the idea of raw versus cooked. I, I've I've read r responses or criticisms, um, I think, from um, medical journals. All foods are good. All of them are good. Even, they, they all do contribute something to the body. And I suppose that's true in a sense, but it's like it's, it, 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 dis, it was tens, tended to be dismissive when now we appreciate fresh foods. We have farmer's markets, and we know that those are special because they're, they're fresher. And we also appreciate that organic is basically uh, the, it, it uses the um, naturally occurring fertilizers, not the synthetics. It, uh, it uses, uh, doesn't use the conventional pesticides that uh, we know now or have residues and we really can't prob hardly scrub them off. So this was the seeds really of the generations who, uh, in, um, who were active in the 60s and 70s that really changed the United mm -hmm. States. And some of these had a lot of European influence, if you look into a, the, the background of, uh, of Paul Bragg. But basically, it was living life to the full and grabbing hold of vitality and, and using foods that were harmonious to that. And that message still resonates today, don't you think? Absolutely. I think there was a, a time, a say, in my mother's time, she, she was born in the 30s, where as women were shifting and going to work, there was less time to be working with some of the fresh foods and the convenience of, i.e. bird's eye frozen foods and canned foods uh, became a way of life. Um, also, TV came on to play where it was advertising to people, well, this is a better way. And what we didn't know, what we didn't know was maybe it wasn't. And now there has been a resurgence of using fresh produce, fresh fruit, vegetables, you know, um, even some people go vegan, some people still use meats, but instead of getting everything frozen and processed, it's, it's making full circle again, again, that they were fresh before, but then they went into processed. Now it's fresh again. And we have choices we can make for both. But we find people who live the lifestyle that Patricia and Paul espoused. If they live with fresh vegetables, their nutrition so much higher. 
with today's age, we're realizing to keep the body healthy, you really need those extra nutrients. You really need those enzymes from the fresh fruits and vegetables to have your body work in a healthy way. So Patricia and uh, Paul were on it and they lived a wonderful lifestyle of sharing that information, which is still out there. The books are still available on Amazon. Recipes are on their website. And uh, we thank Patricia for her work because she was a very positive person. She really mm -hmm. said, live life to the fullest mm -hmm. and here's how you do it. And uh, that's what I, I appreciated about meeting her is in her 90s, she had this huge smile on her face. She was willing to share her knowledge and still in her 90s doing that very thing. Good point. You know, <clears throat> you mentioned about the 30s and 40s and one of the one of the sad developments that started actually in uh, particularly in World War One, when American GIs were handed out tobacco rations is that in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, cigarette smoking became extremely prevalent in the United States for both men and women. And 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 that whole that whole kind of kind of toxic lifestyle became uh, revered as sophisticated and 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 you know um people who advocated what what um um paul talked about were considered like rubes you know they were like they were considered like uninformed and and um and just um too eccentric to be even taken seriously of course you noticed in the in their in their great little film there that the brag company pointed out showed uh, movie stars in Southern California. That's where the Beverly Hills joke comes from. They took it seriously because uh, filmmaking is grueling. It, they're long days. You're supposed to look stunning. And, um, and you got to stay that way if you're going to uh, continue to be um, an actor in Hollywood. And um, that was the, those folks um, followed uh, Paul's suggestions because it worked. And there's a lot other people that sprung up after Paul with a similar uh, mantra. In fact, in fact, uh, we know that ongoingly since then, people have been influenced by wanting to look their best. And you know, I, we we may not as adults kind of say, "Oh, if that actor or actress does that, then I want to do that." You know, consciously we may not do that, but we, you know, people who kind of break boundaries. And saying, "Hey, I'm I'm a vegetarian." That was like weird to say that for a popular figure twenty or thirty years ago. Like strange. In nineteen ninety, I worked in a, a health food store, and I could not put tofu on the menu, or people would not order it. We tried using a vegan cooking of. Um, uh, takeout and people were like well I'm not sure about that food and it was absolutely delicious and uh, but yeah people had an idea that it was going to taste awful when the reality check is it can taste wonderful if done correctly and I think that's where the Braggs with their recipes really were not only healthful but tasty too. Good point and taste is king when it comes to these things but takes you know practice and so forth. Well, this is a good example of, of what pioneers can do. They, they're game changers. They are. And, um, you know, they don't always, they don't get everything right, especially earlier on, maybe even today, they may not get everything right, but they do leave behind a legacy that can really be continued. And that's really uh, the idea, especially if you're in, uh, uh, you make your living by working with natural foods and uh, and healthful products and food supplements, they can really inspire us to continue on. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly is an amazing thing when you can meet someone who has been a key person for the last, well, their company over 100, about 100 years. And not many people can say that. And I must say that you can go into almost any store in North America and walk in and find at least two to four products of the Bragg uh, company 
in a regular grocery store as well as health food stores. Very cool. So it's normal. You just pick it off. It's normal off now. Of, your, of your local Safeway or whatever way That's it is right. in your town. So that shows how things have changed. And there's a lot of many other stories that we're going to follow uh, based on the naturalhealthmovement.org, our website. We encourage you to uh, uh, share this link uh, on our Health Pioneer Theater so that they can be uh, notified when uh, we have a new program, which we plan to have every week on Tuesdays. And uh, participate when we can. We, we'd love for, to hear from you on comments, and you'll have another link. If you uh, missed part of this or, you're, or you'd like to share the link, we'll have a um, video link that will be also mailed out to you. So all you have to do is subscribe. If you can't make it at the live show, then you can watch the recorded uh, recording of the live show. We encourage you to continue then uh, uh, your good things and good thoughts. And we thank you for coming and we hope to see you next week. <laughs>